Does it sometimes feel like all you're doing is being compared? Do you want to know what the trick is to increase your chances of winning regardless of who you're compared to? Do you want to know how to leave a lasting impression that's going to make you stand out versus all 900 of your competitors that are, that are trying to hunt for that same exact lead, that are talking to that same exact contact? Have you ever pitched a deal and said, okay, well, I'm going to, and ever heard from the prospect say to you, okay, well, I'm going to see what these other companies have to say. And you feel like a gut instinct, like, oh man, it's probably the last time I'm going to hear from that person. <laughs> Do you want to know how to get rid of that feeling? Do you want to know how to take control of, of, the, of the chances that you have in your favor of actually earning the trust and the business from the people that you engage with? If you do, or if you're in an industry or environment where you're not the only one that provides the type of service that you give, meaning that you might be dealing with internet leads, and if you know like I know that an internet lead, once they click that submit, or once they click that uh, get offer button that's online, th their phone immediately goes off. It's crazy. Like the turn time is literally within a second. Like right when you hit submit, boom, your inform their information gets shot out to like nine di or 10 different companies. And then you start this kind of like this interview, right? Like um, like your, your prospect is the employer and you're just another candidate that filled out in, in an application on Craigslist or Monster or Indeed or whatever the fuck. And you, it's up to the prospect to hire you, right? And there's always that kind of that inner fear that sometimes or inner doubt sometimes from us salesmen in terms of like, man, I'm probably not gonna get this job. Well, in this case, it's man, I'm probably not gonna get this sale. <laughs> and the, the tricky thing is though, is, is knowing how to react or respond or conduct yourself and carry yourself to efficiently relay your message and properly frame that prospect for a sales pitch or delivery while knowing right up front that they're going to compare you while while learning right up front that they're going to shop you regardless of what you say and and you hear the phone up in the background kind of blowing up so anyway the point is like if you want to know an efficient hack uh, an efficient system to not only increase your chances of of earning that sale winning that sale but deliver a a presentation an interview and an experience to your prospect where you are just memorable like like the whole point of uh you know of of us kind of being un, you know less confident with letting that prospect go and think about it more is because we believe that they're going to forget about us we believe that once they hear a low price then then they just then all the time that we just shared with them whether it's 20 minutes 30 minutes or 45 minutes has been all a waste of time and then we got to go restart again and if you caught uh not yesterday's but um wednesday's breakfast of champion episode what i shared with you was a a formula of how to avoid burnout and 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 this this video actually will help you avoid burnout so this should be how to avoid burnout in part two and it's because it's not giving you this impression that you can sit you constantly have to start over uh from ground zero right and so if this has been a problem to you or if you rely on your on your sales delivery your sales impact your sales production um that to determine your income and your income determines the quality of life you have or your income determines whether or not you provide for your family or keep your lights on or keep you know what i mean food and, and and clothes on on your uh you know with your with your family then you're definitely going to want to watch this entire episode the video is going to show you a very efficient hack and the best part about it is it's been right under your nose this entire time let me show you everything i know jungles like it's been right in your view this entire time. As a matter of fact, I know for certain that uh, not everyone has actually taken a peek at it nor even used it, although it's been there this entire time. And let me explain what it is. So as you already know in sales, right, one of the very first um, in pieces of engagement is the actual introduction. And, and, and when I'm saying engagement is because with a prospect, you deal with them not only on the very first call, not only on the intro call, not only in the inbound call or the follow up or the outbound or, you know, the processing or, you know, the the uh, the stipulations when you're collecting steps, when you're collecting conditions or when you let them know the process is over. You're in this constant engagement, right? It's this relationship that you establish with your prospect. 
And so if you if you if we reverse engineer it and we start right from right from the top, you know, going backwards, right, from completion sale, like you're shaking the hand and saying congratulations, all the way through the process to the interview to the introduction. That's where it ultimately starts. And so that is basically, think of it as kind of like your frame. This is your your concrete slab, if you will. And what I've noticed is that our very first engagement will literally determine the remainder of that very first engagement. Let me explain. So our very first engagement typically is the application, right? And because we call it an application, we sometimes treat it as such rather than treat it as an engagement. And when I'm saying engagement, I'm not talking about like you gotta get on your knees and ask them to marry you, boo-boo. What I'm talking about is you're engaging, you're, you're, it's a give-take, give-take relationship. And I wanna underline that and, and let you know that that should be the sequential order, right? Give-take, give-take. And if you find yourself just giving, 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 asking for a take, no, okay, and then giving, giving, right? That's not the give, take, give, take relationship. Basically, what you are is a menu. You're just a menu, boo-boo. And I don't want you to be a menu because when you are a menu, you're letting your prospect decide what is best for them, what they like. And this is in a restaurant, you know, sometimes we sell services that require an expert. It requires a consultative approach. And I wanna share with you exactly how to do this because the faster that you position yourself as a consultant, the likelihood of you taking control of that, of that conversation, right? So here's the hack. Number one is that if you haven't, if you haven't yet, you want to download a copy of the sales script that I've given you because that in itself is the hack. And I'm going to explain why it's the hack. Because some of you might be like, "Oh, here we go, the free sales script again." <laughs> like, D man, I signed up for it. I never got it. And if that's happened to you, it's probably because again you're using your business email address, use your personal email address, use your primary email address, because you you. If you put your your work email, it's my domain, which is salesremaster.com. Um, that's actually the email it even it comes from is is uh, is Daniel at salesremaster.com. What's going to happen is your work uh, uh, internet or intranet, your work domain, it's going to spit it back. It's not going to accept it. It's going to reject it because your your business is going to be is going to quarantine outside. Um, you know domains that shouldn't be coming in it's to protect your system so so I, I urge you to put in your personal email and then make the request and then get a copy of it and the reason why is because again going back to how every single sale starts is 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 your immediate impression it's your very first impression it's that very first engagement and I can't stress enough how important it is that you position yourself right from hello all the way up until congratulations, the process is over. You know that's the the fully transact the, the transaction is complete. And the reason for this is because, especially now in today's market, consumers, our prospects, they have this uncanny ability to quickly compare us to a ton of companies. They just have options galore, right? And so our focus sometimes. It, it resorts to, our, when I say our, what I'm talking about is us as salesmen, us as sales representatives. Our focus believes that it's all about price, it's all about rate, it's all about service, it's all about reviews, it's all about you know uh, brand recognition. And I, and, I, and I can be the very first one to tell you that that is farthest from the truth. What it has to do, and let me explain, what it really has to do with is is the engagement <laughs> it's the personalization of you you are a brand right it's the it's it's the experience that they felt with you the emotional impact that they felt with you and so if i can if i can put this in in a way that you can understand if you if you think about it right there are not unknown companies right now that you probably deal with where you used to deal with um, let's, I, man, I, I think like, you know, like t-shirts, right? Like, so you possibly when you're growing up, like you only dealt with, and I'm going to use this because everyone knows who it is, Gucci, right? Like you're just a Gucci type of guy. And then you found another brand name or another entity that wasn't necessarily a brand name, but they're more individualized, more personalized, but it made you feel good. Like, right? Like, like, uh, like my son is all about these draws, right? I never, man, kids are crazy nowadays. They're all about these draws. And so he has he has all these underwears by Ethica, 
I don't know if you know about Ethica. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. But uh, man, these drawers are like are like luxury brand. I've never heard of them, but they've gone they've gone completely like um, viral, right? And so apparently this is huge thing. Like all the kids have it. Ethica is like the new thing to do. And man, when we were kids, I didn't care about our draws, right? We didn't care about our boxers. But anyway, I want to put that and use that as kind of an example because Fruit of the Loom has this reputation. It has this kind of this uh, this market domination their presence is is known right they're the uh, you know what i mean they're the they're the johnson and johnson of the of the under underwear world per se but then you got this this no name brand that just came up within a year or two or, or fairly new i would imagine it's called Ethica, and it's got all the kids going going crazy over it. My son went crazy. He's been asking about it, so my wife ordered him some, and uh, and he was you know wondering when it was gonna get there, when it was gonna get there, and so then finally it got there. And this boy, all he man, this boy loves his draws, and it's the thing you know it's those things because what happens whether my son wanted to to fill those draws personally because it felt comfortable on his nuts, or my son wanted to be cool because all the kids at school were wearing it whatever it was it 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 latched onto him emotionally and it created this desire and so i want to share that with you because you may have this false understanding or perception that it's your company's fault while you're not getting a sale or it's your leads that fault while you're not getting a sale it's the quality of leads and really what it is is just you in 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 most cases, you're just not leaving a lasting impression. And so my sales script is going to help you leave that lasting impression. Let me explain why it works. So when you go to the link in my bio, and I'll leave a link right below this video, and that's what I meant by this entire time it's been under, underneath your nose, is because every sale starts with an initial, an initial engagement. And uh, and if you if you had a chance to check out my script and, and maybe maybe you did a long time ago you tried it out and it didn't it didn't necessarily work in your flow so you like most people will naturally gravitate back to your original habits and I can't tell you how often that is the reason why a lot of us get burnt out is because we kind of do this this uh, repetitive motion and you know when you do something over and over and over expecting different results but you're not getting that result you go insane you just you literally your brain just goes to mush um, and that is ultimately how you get burnt out and so my video from Wednesday and I'll leave a link uh, below this video or maybe I'll leave a card if I could ever figure out how that works and it'll it'll take you to this video but it was called how to avoid burnout and the reason why it it, it works is because it enables you to be in the moment it enables you to manage your time in a way where your focus and your activity is within that given activity you're not carrying in baggage from your past experience or you're not assuming these false illusions that it's not gonna work out and you you kind of change your energy and delivery and demeanor and so the script works because of a few few things number one is you can't make a sale unless you have that person's attention right so without attention, you just can't make a sale. No matter how good in sales you are, no matter how you know how low your rate is or how low your price is, if you don't got the attention, boo boo, you don't got a sale. And then if you if you consider also, without having trust, right, or or interest, you don't have attention. Like why am I gonna pay attention to someone who I don't trust? Why am I gonna, because that's my time, right? That's, that's my perception of time. My attention is my time and I value my time. So, so think about that because if you value your time, well, what do you think your consumers are thinking? Your prospects are thinking the same exact way. And so you ever feel that? Like you ever meet someone and you're like, man, there's something about him, I don't trust him, fuck him. And then just move on, right? And just like, mm. he's like you get this bad feeling. And so you, 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 that's typically what happens with our engagements. And so again, without attention, without trust, without interest, like I'm interested, um, without their curiosity, you don't have their attention. You don't have the, the, the platform or the foundation to make a sale or at least to increase your chances of creating or making a sale. And so why I share this with you is because it is important that you understand the, these key things. Whereas a lot of times we go into our application process expecting that a sale will be made, expecting that we'll you know, ultimately um, just earn a sale. Like if they qualify, they're just gonna pick us. Well, the truth of the matter is that if they qualify and 
and they could they could they're actually in a position where they could buy your product or or you could deliver a product meaning that they have all the qualification factors income credit and all that whatever it takes to to uh complete a, a sales transaction that person has now options right <laughs> because they're chances are there are other companies who are just like yours chances are there are other hungry salesmen who are just like you and chances are once you pull that person's credit or once you engage with that person on the topic of your service they're likely to speak to someone else about the same type topic or your competitor is likely to be triggered and alerted of this inquiry and so when when this happens it 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 kind of it's like sharks right they smell blood in the water so everyone starts trickling towards your prospect and it's unfair but that's the cost of doing business and this is why we make the money that we make in sales but again going back to the sales script when you download it besides having all the helpful quick links to all the social media channels besides giving you a free preview of the sales master university it is literally the verbiage and the layout now I want to share with you if it doesn't work right away that's natural it's because you just need to practice it don't try it for a week or don't try it for a day and then just give up on it there's a reason why I put a lot of work into into putting that together there is a reason why I'm telling you with utmost confidence why it works it's because it does and and that is ultimately your first engagement with your prospects and I can't ex express how important it is that that first engagement it, it goes it goes right it has to be borderline perfect because that is going to determine the likelihood of you being remembered the likelihood of you getting your calls back getting the attention getting the you know the trust getting the interest the curiosity and 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 the reason why it works when you download it you're gonna notice that one of the very first things I tell you to do is of course thank the customer service representative who transfers it to you or even the front desk girl or the receptionist and let's just say their name was Jenna right like and they're and they're transferring you John Smith I think was the name of the example in the script you know hey Jenna thanks thanks for uh, you know when Jenna uh, transfers the phone call to you or what have you you know you want to say hey thanks for transferring Jenna hey John this is Daniel I want to appreciate you for you know I want to thank you for holding on the reason why Jenna is transferring you to me is because I'm authorized to provide you with the information that you need and and so so I want you to just pause right there and listen to that to that statement the very first sense of impression that or the very first impression that your prospect got from you was gratitude right it's basically saying thanks Jenna that meaning thanking the person so there's this kind of this uh, camaraderie like okay Daniel knows Jenna there it's not like Jenna is is a, a tele telemarketer in the Philippines or in some sort of remote location that just transferred me to some random salesman there's this perception that we know each other right there's this perception that we are a team and so that very first impression of gratitude is important but also after I thank Jenna I also thank the person on hold so if their name was John and I say hey John thank you for for holding the reason why and then I set the expectation and I explain the reason why she's transferring you to me is because I don't want you to believe that I'm some closer that now you're speaking to a salesman I want you to perceive or believe that they're transferring you to me because I am authorized to provide you with the information in other words I am the decision maker I am the authority I can give you the solution I can give you the answers that you're looking for and so now I've kind of framed the the engagement instead of being uh, uh, engage or instead of communicating with a salesperson or a salesman what I've done is I've I've framed up the engagement and set up the the relationship that that conversation as as you're speaking to the person who has the answers now I'm the consultant and then what I do is I earn their attention uh, by of course showing gratitude but I but I also take their attention and I earn their trust and and their curiosity by saying the, the very next line in that sales script and say you know what um, uh, before I go any further what I'm gonna do is ask a few basic questions and this is gonna let me know if I can continue with our call and ultimately why that works is because it it answers their immediate concern the concern that they not tell you they're not telling you that they're fearful of wasting their time they're not gonna tell you that they're fearful of being exposed or being vulnerable they're not gonna tell you that you know you know how they will tell you it though they'll tell you it by 
by sounding upset, by sounding like they're in a rush, by, by telling you, I just want to know your lowest rate and lowest fee. That's how it comes out, right? But, but we as humans and we being in sales, we come from this kind of this service background. Our job is to serve. Selling is serving, right? It, it, that's ultimately what it is. And so we have this customer service approach where we hear something and we feel entitled that we have to deliver what they're requesting. But sometimes we forget that humans voice one thing but really mean something else, right? So our prospects are gonna say like, hey, I'm just looking for your lowest rate, lowest price, I gotta go, right? That's their defense mechanism. And so this is why it works is because I'm telling them and I'm kind of getting their curiosity by saying, you know, I'm gonna ask a few basic questions first, right, basics, and I'm not gonna intrude on their personal information. And this is gonna let me know if I can move forward with our call. Okay, cool, I may not even have to complete this call, I'm gonna save time, I'm gonna be efficient, this is convenient. What, do you, what are those basic questions, Daniel? This is what they're thinking. And then ultimately what I do is lead into the next sentence of, the, of that sales script. This is all an intro sales script, and the reason why it's effective is because one of the primary reasons why we, we're not making sales today is because our intro is wrong. Our scripting is off. We're not setting up the right expectation. And so the next step I say, okay, well the property we're gonna talk about, this is your primary residence, right? Got it. Besides the mortgage on your credit report, what other debts or what other outside uh, uh, debt do you have besides the mortgage? You know, and this is a very basic question. This is gonna let me know if I can move forward with the call. The, the prospect may assume like, well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because the information I put in, and you wanna invite these objections, right? Because sometimes when we hear an objection, we get defensive, and then we start, we start, combat, we start responding in a combative uh, demeanor or some sort of a kind of like a debate, like, like a challenge. And we actually, in this case, with, these, with this script, we want the objection because it enables us to again position ourselves. So if they said, well, Daniel, what does that got to do with anything? I'm calling you about my mortgage. I'm not calling you about other debt. What's that got to do with anything, Daniel? Daniel. <laughs> um, and so our response would be, well, what it has to do with is the information I put in front of you is, is it's accurate. Meaning there are a lot of companies that are willing to tell you a number that is going to be best case scenario, but unfortunately we don't operate that way. The only information I can put in front of you is information that applies to you. You see, one of the main reasons why I have to ask this question before I even proceed forward with the call is because I can't waste your time. I can't, I can't give anything to you outside of what you actually qualify for. So if your time is valuable and you only want information in front of you that applies with no surprises at the very end, well fortunately I can give that to you but I need to know these few things first before I can, I can deliver that. So can you confirm besides the mortgage, what other debt do you have? And they're gonna be like, okay, well I owe 15 grand in credit card debt, got it. Any uh, installment debts like car loans or what have you, and basically what you're doing is you're just setting up the expectation because especially in this market right now, it's not like we could sell them a low rate. We can't necessarily sell them a rate and term you know, transaction where we can't deliver. So typically what, we, what we're finding ourselves doing is having to sell that, in, that person on a cash out refinance because that's the only leverage that we have because ultimately what we're doing is we're taking them from a 3.75 and we're offering now a 5.5%. And so the, the spectrum has changed, right? And so the only real reason why people will ignore, overlook the cost or the rate or the fee is because is because of convenience is because of their perception of how can more convenient it will be and there's a there's a fact about buying uh, the the law of buying and this fact is that people will pay extra people will pay a premium for a sense of convenience and they will do that because they believe it saves them time People will pay extra if they believe that they can get things faster because it means they're not wasting their time in, uh, in being uh, inconvenienced with waiting, if that makes sense. And so our delivery has, has, has to be different than saying, hey, well, what's your rate? Okay, you're looking for a lower rate than 3.5? Okay, unfortunately, I can't help you because that ultimately is what leads you to a burnout is because you're not even engaging with the prospect. You're not you're not opening them up to dig deep and find out what their interests are and that's all you really need. You just need to know what, what makes that person tick and my sales script does that for you. So download a copy of the sales script. There's a link below this video that says uh, Banker's Script.
right? It says free sales script. Whatever sales, whatever industry you're in, just get a copy of it. It's, it's free. And I, I, I urge you, don't use your work email address. Use your personal email address. Use the personal email address that you get on your phone because it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be delivered right away, right when you hit um, you know, uh, request. And, and, and check out my pedigree. You know, like if, you, if this is your first time stumbling on the channel, go look at my other content. Look, at, I, I know what I'm talking about. And one of the most challenging things that I have to go through every single day is seeing unprepared salesmen, salesmen who are just simply not given the right mentoring, not given the right coaching, and they're being fed to the wolves. And, and it's unfortunate because these salesmen, you know, they're in an industry where this time last year, they didn't need to know how to sell. You know, this time two years ago, they didn't need a solid sales script. Everyone was just buying. But the only people that are surviving in this sales environment right now are playing, they're playing chess. They're not playing checkers. Get it? And so if you want to know about positioning, you want to know how to be two, three steps ahead of your prospects so you can ultimately save yourself time and avoid being compared, avoid being forgotten. If you wanna leave a lasting impression that will be so memorable that both of them will only think about you, will overlook all the other emails from your competitors, will, will disregard and ignore all of the text attempts or the voicemail attempts from your competitors, and you wanna win some sales, like you wanna make your job easier, download a copy of that sales script today, and I'll see you on the next episode, bye. Why am I naked, fool?